Welcome to the course on soil mechanics according to the syllabus. The number is CE 3102. I am very happy to be an instructor for this course. My name is Matho. And just to give you an idea, I have 50 years of experience of teaching geotechnical engineering. Started my teaching career in the year 1962. And I was teaching at IISC, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, IIT Kanpur. And for the last nine years at uh, JNTU, Hyderabad, Kukatpalli campus. And for the last two years in IIT Hyderabad. The course called Soil Mechanics According to Your Syllabus. The modern terminology is we use this uh, slightly differently. We call it as geotechnical engineering. The reason we change the name as geotechnical engineering is you know that geo is means at and engineering of at is called geotechnical engineering. In many places this is called geotechnical engineering 1 and the second course is called geotechnical engineering 2 wherein you will be discussing the application of the principles you study during this semester to practical problems especially for foundation design. Why do we need to study soil mechanics or geotechnical engineering? I expect all of you are going to graduate as civil engineers and what do civil engineers do? Civil engineers are the ones who provide quality of life to society. Any aspect of society has to do with civil engineering. If you want to live somewhere, you need a building or a house. You want to work somewhere, you need a house. It could be a commercial one or an industrial one or nowadays the service industry, whether it is Microsoft or Google, whatever it is. You have to work in a multi-story structure. If you have a factory, you need a building. Nowadays, the whole city of Hyderabad, any place you will find, there are many multi-story buildings. So housing is one aspect of civil engineering that you do. The second aspect of civil engineering, shall we say, is communications. If you want to travel from place A to place B, what do we need? We need highways, you need roads within the city, you may need railways, etc. When you want to provide this, who will be the one to deliver the goods? It's again a civil engineer. So apart from the roads, you need the ports, highways, I mean, for example, airports, etc. Now, when you want to design a railway or a highway, you run across water bodies like streams, rivers, what have you, which means you need bridges. So when you have to build a bridge, again, you need a civil engineer to do that. The second most important aspect for society is water. Society cannot exist without water or human being cannot exist without water for more than two days. Now if you want water, you have to have some reservoirs, tanks. Hyderabad is very famous for all the tanks. At one time I believe there used to be 465. Unfortunately only about less than 100 are remaining. But somebody had to build them. You need water for human consumption, daily use. You need water for irrigation, which means you need water, dams, reservoirs, etc. The most famous dams in Andhra Pradesh have been the Nagarjit Sagar, which was started somewhere in mid 50s, then Sri Salem Dam, which was started in 1970s, and there are several projects which are coming up all over. When you want to build a dam again, you need a civil engineer to deliver that. Now how do you transport the water from the dam to the people or the fields? You need the canals, irrigation canals, the main canal, the branch canal, the distributaries, etc. Right from the day of the Vedas, we have been designing canals and that is why we need civil engineers to do that. Apart from this, for example, now the latest revolution, if you look at it, is the mobile communication. And you have all these towers. You need towers for mobile communication, power transmission, etc. And who is going to build them? Again, it's a civil engineer who builds them. Otherwise, you will not be able to use your mobile. So you will see that 
whole spectrum of activities in civil engineering are dependent on these structures and they make the life better for us to live. Now, can you imagine any of these structures floating in air and giving you the job? All of them had to rest on ground, which means you need to provide some kind of foundation and whatever loads that are coming had to be transmitted to the ground below. And unless you know something about the ground, you will not be able to do any design. So when I'm just listing them, you can say buildings, bridges, roads, highways, ports, harbors if you want to call them, airports, etc. Similarly, you will have dams, canals, under general category of irrigation structures. Okay, it's buildings you can say, residential, commercial, industrial, or even recreational. All the structures that we need or you look around in the city or in village, they have to be built so that the quality of life improves. And these structures will have to rest on the ground. And so the structures have to be built on the ground. So what is special about the ground? If you look at the ground, usually it consists of different types of soils. And why do we need to study them? Again, I'll come back to you. As a civil engineer, you will be using materials like cement and its derived components, say concrete. Then we use steel as reinforcement or as a structural component. Then other material we use is bricks and some occasionally we use lime as a mortar, in mortar. We use for doors and windows, but not for structures, wood or timber. For So basically you can see that these are the kind of materials you deal with. Of course, we also deal with water, which is not a structural one, but civil engineers have to deal with water part of hydraulics, irrigation, groundwater, etc. The speciality is cement is a manufactured material, so is steel. Based on this, we design concrete, and then we also have what you call as reinforced concrete. Now, these are all manufactured, so which means you have control on the product. For example, if I look at steel, whether you buy it from Vishakhapatnam steel plant, Tata steel plant, Jindal, or Sail, or Arcelometer, you can be sure that the properties are all very well defined. You know exactly what the property you are going to get, and you can be sure that the property you are expecting will be delivered. Same thing with respect to cement and concrete, and nowadays we have several what they call as RMCs, that means ready mixed concrete plants, which will give you if you say M35, it will give you M35, M40, M50, etc. So the properties of all of them are known. The third one, for example, if I look at the bricks, bricks are again manufactured. If you have the right mixture of soil, we put it in a kiln, fire it up to about 900 degrees temperature, and you get a very hard structural member called a brick, which we use to usually for small buildings, etc. We use bricks as walls in a multi-storied building, but they are not necessarily load-bearing. We are not particularly worried about the other ones. But when you come to founding the building on the ground, all the load that's coming up has to be carried by the ground. Now, is ground a natural material or a manufactured material? You can see that this, if you want to be a little spiritual, it's a God-given or can I say nature? 
So we have no control on that. Somebody says, I want to build a structure here, which means we have to look at the ground below the structure which is coming up. So this is a material that has in existence for maybe millions of years or even billions of years. So which means we have no control, but we need to find out the properties so that this structure is safe and stable and it has a good service life. And that is why we talk of this as geotechnical engineering. It's an interface between engineering geology, which you probably would have studied by now in your second year, and civil engineering. So geotechnical engineering or soil mechanics is an interface between engineering geology and civil engineering. And that is where we come into picture. And if you do neglect this, the problems will get mounted because everything depends on the capability of the soil here. The classic examples recently I can just give you. For example, few years ago, one of the supports for the Panjagutta flyover collapsed because nobody bothered about whether the soil filled up in the pit was strong enough or not. A more recent one has been just last week. One of the roads between Kairatabad and Panjagutta collapsed because the water from somewhere seeped into the drain and then made it weak. Almost every week you will see in the newspaper some disaster accident happening because people do not pay proper attention to the soil or the ground below. So unless you are careful of the principles that are involved and apply them appropriately, we are likely to end up with similar problem. And we all know that cost of an accident is very, very severe and dangerous, could be for human life too. So because of this, it's felt a subject like geotechnical engineering or soil mechanics is very essential for civil engineers. And then we'll apply this to practical foundations later. I just want to now give you the syllabus, the topics that we plan to cover in this course would be first characterization of, of soil, then second would be the hydraulic properties, we call them as permeability for example, then Third would be basic engineering, which means you need to know some stresses. So stress analysis, what happens under gravity, under various conditions, and what kind of stresses are there within the soil. Now as a follow up this, we call a topic called seepage. How do I account for flow through soil using the principles of hydraulic properties? You know open channel flow, you know pipe flow, but do we know anything about flow through soil where the voids can be of different sizes, different lengths and shapes. So that analysis is called seepage. Then we go to a very important parameter which is the deformation part of it. So under deformation, we start with what is called as compressibility. And the deformations in soil do not occur when you apply the load like that happens in case of steel and concrete. They take time. So that phenomenon of deformation with time is called consolidation. The reason being it takes time for the water within the soil to move out of the voids and that phenomenon is called consolidation. We will talk of that. Then the strength of the soil is the next most important parameter. Where in, in case of steel, for example, you have compression strength, tensile strength, flexural strength, etc. Soil, which is basically a granular material, does not have any of these. It only has what is called as the shear strength. 
So basically, we'll be studying the shear strength of soils. There are various ways in which you can measure it, and we'll find out what is the criterion that governs the strength, and use that for defining the parameters. The last topic under this category is called the stability of slopes. This happens because we don't always have a level ground. Suppose I have a sloping ground, something like this. There is a big elevation difference. This is the top of the slope. This is the bottom of the slope. And you can see that this slope has a certain angle theta. Now, we need to make sure that when I have this kind of a slope, is it safe? Sometimes very interestingly, in a dry season, the slope may be safe, but in the same slope, in the rainy season or wet season, rainy or as we call it in India, monsoon, suddenly you find a certain mass of soil starts moving down and it can lead to collapse. And that aspect is called the stability of the slopes. Many times this problem comes because we make a cut so that I can provide a road. For example, I had a slope like this, I make a cut and then make it steeper. The moment we interfere with nature, this slope may be stable, may not be stable. As a good civil engineer, you have to make sure when you made this cut that it is going to be safe. So please remember that any time we interfere with nature, we are disturbing the natural balance. So because of that, we need to worry about the stability. So there are several methods that we talk of and we will discuss how to analyze the kind of failure that is likely to happen and why does it happen and what can be done to prevent it. In order to study this, the textbooks which have been referred to or prescribed are references. The one which I would like to follow to make life easy for you would be principles of Geotechnical Engineering by B. M. Das. We have a low cost Indian edition. It costs probably somewhere around 300 to rupees 350. I strongly recommend, advise you that you buy this book. It does not cost more than probably one of your trips to a movie, the ticket plus your popcorn and coke, transport everything will not be more than, will be around the same price as this one. So don't stinky prevent, I mean try to read notes and try to pass. If you want to learn, buy a book. Second book which again is a good one is by the Geotechnical Engineering by Corduto. D. P. Carduto. This is slightly more expensive and may not be easily available in India. But the third one is again a local one, Basic and Applied Soil Mechanics by Gopal Ranjan and his colleague A. S. R. Rao. They are from Roorkee. It used to be a considered as a good book, but my experience has been that it is slightly outdated. Some of the principles, of course, are valid, but then I would say the better way of presentation is given by our Indian, but certainly in USA, Mr. Professor Brajadas. So it will be nice if you can catch hold of at least one book and be familiar with the others. And you can find several problems listed at the end. And 
try to solve as many as possible. As part of the course, I definitely would like to suggest some other problems, but it depends on how good you are in practicing them. The whole lecture schedule is approximately 34 to 36 lectures and I am planning somewhere around 35. Let us see how it goes around. So, with this I would like to now make a presentation, PowerPoint presentation, where you will get a feel for the subject of geotechnical engineering. I just would like to highlight some of the very important engineering projects and how soil mechanics or geotechnical engineering is very relevant to us.